I mean, that kind of stuff wears on me. Which one's the book? Yeah. The Give book me the of pain, Martyr. pain, you pain. I'm taking extensive notes. You ready? Let's do it. Okay. I need coffee. I'll have a cigarette instead. Okay, so mm. I promise you. They don't mind if you smoke in no. Tennessee, do they? No, they, they like tobacco, as a matter of fact. All right, we're here with Margie. Hey, you know, you know my real name. You're How part you of history. Uh, you're part of history now. You know, I mean, you're in the Smithsonian, so they come out with things like Margie's your real name. That's weird, isn't it? Being in a museum. I, I tell you, I didn't it. know last night I was going to be in the Smithsonian Museum, and I was just pleased as punch. I've never felt so proud of myself in my life. I mean, there are a lot of things. I mean, there's one thing in being in a film, and there's one thing maybe, you know, having a yeah. picture in Hollywood, but in a museum, it's a little stiff. Being in the Smithsonian's pretty heady stuff. Yeah, um, I wasn't very cool about it. I was sort of jumping up and down with glee like a six year old. But that is a, a very neat thing. Yeah. Do you really have a sense of history or responsibility when you're, I mean, this thing has been around for a long time. What is it, Superman's been around yeah. 50 years? Now, Lois has changed a lot in 50 uh -huh. years, and you're probably not very much like your Lois Lane's, nothing like the Lois Lane that was in the original ones, right? Well, the thing is, I don't have a sense of history about it. I'm just getting one now because I grew up with, A, I'm Canadian, and I grew up without comics. It wasn't allowed, it was forbidden to read them because they were hmm. trash. And hmm. we didn't have a TV because we were too far north for TV reception. I grew up in mining camps. So, um... It, it never was part of my childhood, and I right. think if you get something stuck in you when you were a kid, then it yeah. takes on mythical proportions. But whereas if you if you hit it at 28 years old, yeah. it doesn't have quite the same impact. You know, it's that's oh true. that's interesting. Oh, these people really. I mean, I was very surprised when the first one came out at the response of people who would come up to me on the street or in restaurants or wherever and explain to me why this bit was wrong or that that bit was right because the properties of kryptonite did mm -hmm. this. I thought, oh my. God, these people, these people are out there. Aren't they? Yeah. I mean, but most of America knows. Did you have any interesting uh, things with children during all that? You mean any oh well, the joy. Moments? I mean, the the, uh, the the creepy part of the fame was the grown-ups. But I must say, the little kids, when they you know meet Lois Lane and Superman, that that their faces lighting up, that just fills your heart. That like is nothing. nice, isn't it? But the uh, the, con the adverse of that is, is when they look at you, which they've done lots, and they get all piped up. They're going to meet Lois Lane, and then they kind of go, "You don't look like Lois Lane," and their little hearts just break, because there you are, just a person. Just and a person, yeah, and they're broken out. All right, let's play a little free association here. Oops. I don't do this to everybody, but I think you're a good candidate for this one, all right? <laughs> hey. One sentence answers on the following, okay? First thing comes in your mind. Oh, boy, I could get in trouble here. Marriage. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Lois Lane. Money. Oh, that Men. was terrible. That's all right. <laughs> First thing comes to your mind. Men. I love them. Motherhood. That's my primary reason for existence, I think. Hollywood. Dreadful, awful, ghastly, tacky, horrible place. Never want to go back. Richard Pryor. The best actor I've ever worked with. Christopher Reeve. One of my dearest friends on earth. See, that went too hard. Yeah. Canada grades, you know, A, B, C, D. I guess you had those in Canada, right? Yeah. Okay. Give yourself a grade in self control. <laughs> um, C minus. Effort. I'd guess say B plus or A. That's pretty good. You try hard, but you can't control yourself, right? <laughs> Math. <laughs> you are a trap. Math. <coughs> men? Math. <clears throat> Math. Oh, actually, I'm very good at that. I do bet didn't A. have men in, in school that I went to. You couldn't get a grade in men or women. Not a flunk, probably, with that one. Yeah, no. Um, math, mm -hmm. B plus A. What would the teachers write comments in little Margot's uh Well, little I was Margie's one school? of those kids who they kept testing me, and I had, you know, it was the era of the IQ, and I had one of those ones that was off the charts, and so no matter what I got, 95%, whatever, I'd always get not good enough. And I thought, well, God damn. <laughs> we can't well, seem to challenge Margo no enough way. or something I, like that, right? Yeah, we, with, we wish her, she'd use her energy in a more positive direction. I was always a bit of a prankster. I did very, very, very well in school, and I, I was terribly afraid, certainly later when I was in high school, of being uh, branded a geek and a nerd. So I was a closet nerd and I loved books and loved school and loved reading, but I wasn't about to let anyone know it because it mm. wasn't cool, you know? And you couldn't be a cheerleader or one of those people everyone liked it was it, it was sort of it was just uncool to be brainy so were you were so a quiet I, I little girl that. as far as zero mm, to uh, no. say 13 were you quiet quiet yeah like for your first 10 12 years mm, of, no I was very high-spirited oh, and adventurous then. and yeah and that's kind of stuck but with the you part all the of me that I hid was the quiet part mm -hmm. the, and I still hide it you know I um, I don't know why it seems kind of silly but there's part of me that's still embarrassed think you'll ever slow down 
Oh, or have you seen yourself slow down any in the last couple of years, maybe? I mean, just I have mm -hmm. periods that I don't show the public where I'm, I'll spend months in my home reading or being mm -hmm. very quiet. Yeah. Um, but when you bust out, it's dangerous, I guess. <laughs> for some people. <laughs> <laughs> Is Margot the mom different from my mom? From my mom? Yes, very. In what way? Oh boy, that that's one I really don't, don't really? think okay. I'll go into. No. Are you? Uh, I'm a good is, mom. Is I, it good? You like I, being a mom? I, it's the best thing that ever happened to me in my life having that child. I. Uh, does kind of straighten out your priorities, man, doesn't it? Boy, does it ever! And I, I remember the. I mean, this is going to sound gross on TV, but when this little thing came out of me, and there was this person with its own soul, its own heart, mm -hmm. it was as though someone had given me an injection of love, and it was the first time in my whole life, I knew what love was. Mm. And I couldn't stop weeping. Days. I just I would look at her. I went, this is what love means. This is what it's about. That's why you know, it was just amazing. And, it, and that feeling never leaves. And they start to grow up on you. And you go, oh, God, they're going to leave me. Ah, <laughs> panic, panic. Do you ever see any of you in her? She's quite different than me. She's much more like her father. Her father's a writer and novelist. And she's, she's very thoughtful and... Um, She's, she's not like me at all. She's got her own little soul. That's the other shock about parenthood. You think you're going to have a little you. Mm -hmm. And this other person comes out. You can't quite believe it, you know? You, you keep waiting for the you. you know? I keep hoping it's not going to be another little me. I've got two little girls, and I hope they don't be like that. If you're watching, <laughs> you'll be a... Uh, and finally, what are you going to do? Hi, if you, you guys are yeah. watching. Michelle, she loves you, Hi, too. Hi, Michelle. Uh, what do you want to do when you grow up? I don't know if I ever want to grow up. Um, I do, I, I want to see the whole world and I want to mm -hmm. do everything. I'm just the greediest pig around. That's I want great. to write a book, direct a movie, see everything, hear everything, and be on a, go to every continent. And hope uh, you can keep your energy level up, right? <laughs> well, it's not, yeah. Yeah, really. Well, thank you a lot. Good to meet you. you. That was sort of fun. Right, that, right. Was a, that was a fun one. Thank you. <laughs>